like wigged, fixed, fake, whatever you want to call it. I am just done with boxing. Welcome everyone to another episode of Reese's Roundup. I am your host, the Lightning Kid himself, and today I am upset because boxing is by far the worst sport in sports history. I mean, how can you, how, if anybody, if anybody at all, and I hope to God that everybody that's watching this video watch that fight, because that had to be the biggest bull crap I had ever experienced in, in, in my years of watching boxing. I mean, I went for Wilder. I did. Deontay Wilder was my pick. I thought he was going to destroy Tyson Fury. Um, I called a fifth round knockout. But my God, when I saw this fight and I saw Tyson Fury bobbing and weaving and he's out here and he's just tooling with this man. Like, I was like, wow, Fury just gained a fan. And he was out here dominating Deontay Wilder for 10, for, for 10 rounds, 10 rounds. And I'll admit those two knockdowns were huge for Wilder in the ninth and the 12th round. But you, if you mean to tell me that it, what, it, it came down to a draw after winning 10 rounds. Fury won 10 rounds to two for Wilder. And it was a draw? I mean, what did the, what, what in the world? What in the world were those judges watching? I, I just don't understand. Fury won that fight hands down. I mean, even when he was knocked down, the man got right back up in a heartbeat. And now people, there are comments of people saying, oh, well the ref took too long to count and it gave Fury a chance to get back up. Fury knew the entire time what the count was and when he was supposed to get up. So even if the ref counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like he would have gotten up right away. He was just following the refs count, so it didn't even matter. I don't, I just don't, <clears throat> I lost my voice last night because I was watching the Alabama game, which was a fantastic game, by the way, but that, I just, I just wanna let you know, let you guys know why my voice sounds like this. But in any case, that was besides the point. I don't know how it was scored, a split decision. I don't know how it was, how it ended in a draw. Like what did these refs, what did these judges see that we didn't see? I don't get it. I don't get it. Like I said, Wilder only won the ninth and the 12th rounds with those knockdowns, which were huge, by the way, but that doesn't mean that he won the entire fight. That doesn't mean that he won enough to, to get it scored as a draw. It doesn't make any sense at all. It was a great fight overall. Not gonna lie. That fight was amazing. I, I didn't think that Fury stood a chance. I said Fury had no chance to win this fight because Wilder was just, he's got that knockout power and he's he's just he's just explosive. But Fury was giving it to this guy for the whole entire fight. And I was just like, wow, props to Fury, man. And there was no, I mean, <clears throat> there was nothing that told me that Wilder won this fight. The knockdowns, yes, like I said, were huge, but Fury landed 26% of his punches to Wilder's 17%, which, by the way, was the worst percentage from Wilder in his career. So if that doesn't tell you that Wilder lost this fight, then I don't know what does. But in any case, see, even this woman's like, yo, Wilder lost that fight. <laughs> so, I mean, oh my God, I don't know what to say. I, I, I mean... It obviously was a setup for Wilder versus Fury too, but even even if Fury won, or even if Wilder, even even if they gave either one of them those wins, it still would have set up for a second fight because that fight was still amazing regardless. So I I, I just don't get it. I don't know what I don't know what the judges were thinking, but I'm moving on because that that just pissed me off, man. And in other news, the Mets. Um, they went and got Robinson Cano and Edwin Diaz um, for Jay Bruce and a couple of prospects. Now, as a Mets fan, I'm really happy for this because they needed hitting for for sure, and they hella needed pitching. So, um, 
this this is a big big boost for the Mets. Um, yeah, Cano is old. He's 36, but um, despite only playing 80 games last year, he hit a th he hit 303 in those 80 80 games that he did play. Um, Diaz, like I said, is huge. He had a 1.96 ERA and led the league in saves with 57 last year, which is tied for second most, I believe, um, of all time. So in a single season. So I think this is going to be big for the Mets. So please, no injuries this season because I'm, I'm not trying to, to have another disappointing season in baseball. Please, Mets. Gosh. In other news, Kareem Hunt has been released from the Kansas City Chiefs after a video surfaced of him slightly pushing and love tapping a woman in a hotel room. Now, this really did come as a surprise for me, the release anyway, because he's he's been their best running back that they've had in a very long time. And to just get rid of him like that, that kind of comes as a shocker I don't even know who the replacement is but I know he's not going to be a good as good as Kareem Hunt so this 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 is quite a big situation that the Chiefs put themselves in and if you guys see the video here let's watch it right now let's watch this video right now and you guys tell me what you think of it in the comment section here let's watch it come on I don't want this to sound bad, but it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal the way they were making it out to be. It's not like Ray Rice, where he absolutely, you know, destroyed that hoe, but it was a slight push. It was just an escalated situation. He gave her a little kick at the end of it. and. On top of that, when police showed up at the scene, he wasn't arrested, nor did she press charges at the time. So, so I really don't see what the big deal was. They said he lied, which is why they released him. Uh, they said that, or he said that he never left the hotel room, but, and and that he didn't do anything to her. But I, I, I mean, if he just told the truth, everything would have been straight. I mean, all he had to do was say that she was throwing around the N word and that, you know, she kept, pushing him and escalating the situation and she kept instigating the situation and he was just trying to get her away from it you know it's it's like I don't know why you had to lie about that because you would have been saved and your um your career would have been saved but now he's on the commissioner's exemption list he's gonna get suspended six games automatically so once those six games are up who's going to take him well I think the Eagles, definitely number one, should grab him. They desperately need a running back, and their season is over because they don't have one. Uh, I also think the Packers could use him because Rodgers needs a running game. I don't think he's ever had a running game, except for Eddie Lacy when he when, uh, when he had 1,000 yards one season. Like That was, that was pretty much it <laughs> since Aaron Rodgers came into the league. Um, I think the Dolphins could use him as well because he, he'd probably be a good fit for them. Uh, and it would help in the long run. So I think I think out of those three teams, you know, I think those are the three teams that should definitely pick him up. This, I mean, like I said, this is a huge surprise. I was not expecting that to have happened. I thought they were going to like go into like go more in depth into it and really like figure out like what was going to happen and what they were going to do about it. But they just like, nope, he's gone, he's out. Deuces, dog. Like, good luck. Uh, so let me know what you guys think about this week's. Um, interesting <laughs> take on sports. Uh, am I going to do this again? I mean, damn, might as well, right? This is fun. <laughs> I can talk about all this stuff, but let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys want to see for next week's video, and I will see you then. I'm out. Peace.